Okay, so if you're sewing along with me, you should now have your two tubes of fabric. One in the double gauze and one in your printed fabric. Next thing to do is I'm just going to take my double gauze and turn that right sides out. So you'll be left with one tube of fabric, which is right sides out and one which is inside out. Next thing you're going to do is take your right sides out tube and put it inside the other one so that right sides are together. And lay that out nice and flat once it's in there. So you've got one tube inside the other tube. Next thing to do is where you've got those seams that you've just sewn, you are just going to match them up so they line up together and either clip or pin in place. Then you're going to come all the way around that top edge, matching the raw edges, and you're going to clip all the way around that edge of your scarf. I like using wonder clips. I've not come across these before. Once you start using them, you never look back. They're just really easy to use. Pins are great too. Um, but especially if you get into projects where you're securing together several layers, wonder clips really do make life easy. Well, hopefully these should all match up. If you're going to this stage, and you find that that top edge doesn't match up all the way around and one of the tubes is slightly bigger than the other, you can just sort of ease the fabric in one tube into it just by sort of stretching it around a little bit. If the difference is really quite dramatic, then just work out which of your two fabrics is um, slightly bigger and you can just go back to that seam that you did before and take it in a bit so that the two tubes match up. But hopefully they all match up nicely. So you get it. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew in a big circle all the way around here just to secure those two together. And as you can see, I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the fabric is touching. This is what we call right sides together. And in most sewing, um, patterns and instructions, you'll see that term, you'll hear that term right sides together. So let's go back to over to our sewing machine now. Because we're now going round in a circle, you may choose to remove the free arm from your machine and that will allow you to pop your snood over like this. Oops. And then as you go round, um, it will just pull through nice and easily. Because it's such a big opening, you don't really have to do that. But I just thought I'd show you um, how that works. Uh, so here's my raw edge. Again, I'm matching that up to the number 15 line for a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Um, so I pop that under there. I want to make sure but these seams are open and flat, so I'm just going to make sure they're sitting nicely. Lower the needle into my fabric. I'm going to do a few stitches forward and backward. And then off I go. So I come all the way around in a big circle. I'm just matching up those raw edges as I go. Okay, so I've just gone all the way around there. I've created a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. When I get back to the beginning again, I should just go back over my original stitches and do a little back stitch to tie that off. Um, and I'm now ready for the next stage. Okay, so at this point, here's what I'm looking at. I've got my two tubes of fabric with the seam allowances matching here, secured together all the way around the top. 
and open at the bottom. So I'm going to just pull the fabrics apart like this. And that's what I've got now. What I want to do is take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to press the seam that I've just sewn open. So I just keep bringing it round and giving it a very quick press just to open and flatten that seam that I've just sewn. Hello, so I've pressed these seams open and I'm now left, let's move my sewing machine out of the way there. I'm now left with this sort of cross shape in the middle. So I'm still looking at the wrong sides of the fabric. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that over so that the seam is on the bottom. And now comes the sort of slightly brain teasery element of the project because um, your instincts sort of tell you that you're going to do the same now by putting one tube inside of the other and sewing it round and then turning it out. But you kind of end up with a scarf if you do that, which is one side all gauze and the other side all print. And what you actually want is a tube with one fabric in the middle and another fabric on the outside. So you have to do a bit of jiggly pokery to, to, to get that effect. So this is my way of doing it. So I've laid uh, this out like this. And then what I do is I take these raw edges here and fold them into the middle. And then the same on the other side. So I end up with um, the sort of touching again here. Then what I do is I take these two here and put them right sides together, matching the seams. And I'm gonna pop a clip there. Okay, so that's right sides together and seams matching. And I'm only picking up one piece of the gauze and one piece of the viscose or the cotton as I go. And I'm just going to walk my fingers round those raw edges, matching them up, and clipping them together as I go. So you're kind of bringing your, your uh, fabric round, making sure that at all times you've just got one piece of gauze, one piece of printed fabric, and um, that it's right sides together touching. If you are sewing along with me, that you're enjoying your sewing today. And um, maybe if this is your first sewing project, I hope you're enjoying it and you can wear this out and people will say to you, where did you get that? And you say, well, I made it actually. And it really is the loveliest feeling. Or if you're making it as a gift, you know, it's so special to give someone a gift of something that you've made yourself. So, <laughs> beginning to look a bit um, complicated, but really what you'll end up with is this. There we are, I hope that makes sense. So I've got a tube of fabric on one side, it's looking at me at the wrong side, I'm looking at the wrong sides. So one side is the print, the other side is the gauze, and I've just gone through and pinched the fabric together with right sides together and clipped it all the way round. So it comes all the way through the middle there. And this is when it turns out the right way, this is what's gonna give you the effect of having the um, print on the inside and the gauze on the outside or vice versa. Now, what you wanna do is you're gonna sew all the way around here, again with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, but really important, you're gonna to need to leave a gap um, so that you can tuck your hand in and turn it out. So about that size, you know, you want it to be big enough that you can turn it out. 
Now, when you're happily sewing away, it's very likely that you'll forget to leave the gap because you'll be enjoying your sewing so much. So my tip and trick for this is at the beginning and end of the gap, I double up on my pins or I double up on my wonder clips. So when I'm sewing along, I can think, oh, why have I um, put two pins in there, two, two pins or two clips? And that's why, because it's going to remind me to leave a gap. So I'm going to start just below the two and the other two will just tell me this is where you need to stop. Otherwise, and I've done it so many times, you just keep going and you think, oh, oops, I've come to the end again. And then you have to unpick a bit. So putting a double clip in at the beginning and the end is just a nice way of reminding yourself. So let's go over to the sewing machine and get that seam sewing. So I've put my work under my foot and um, I'm going to start sewing just below the two wonder clips that mark the beginning of uh, the gap that I want to leave. Um, and I'm lining up my raw edges again with the 1.5 centimeter or 15 millimeter guideline. A couple of back stitches at the beginning and end to begin with, and then off I go all the way round. Sort of have to untuck it from itself as you go because you're in this funny position of sewing through this, the middle of the of the loop. So just um, as you go, kind of match the raw edges, take it nice and easy, nice and slowly, and you're just going to untuck the fabric that you need to sew as you go, because you're kind of coming around in a loop again, but this time through the middle. find as you're sewing, because this does sometimes happen, that your top fabric is creeping a bit. So as the presser foot is pressing on the fabric, it may just push your fabric and create this sort of wave that pushes the fabric that's on top further away from the fabric on the bottom. And what you end up with is a bit of an excess of this where it's been pushed by the presser foot. Um, that's called creeping, or at least I call it creeping. I don't know if that's the technical term. Uh, what I would do um, to try to eliminate this as much as possible is every few stitches with my needle securing my fabric, making sure my needle is fully down, I lift up my foot and I just smooth everything again and then I lower it again and just do that. So I do a few stitches. You want everything to match up. So just a few stitches. I'm smoothing this fabric through. I'm not really tugging at the back of it. Um, you can do that if you get really bad creeping, but um, it's not really necessary. The feed dogs underneath should do the job of pushing the fabric through. But like I said, if you get that problem with one fabric walking over the top of the other one, then every few stitches, just lift up your presser foot, smooth everything down, lower it again and continue. You might also find in places like I have here that one fabric walks away a little bit from the other one. If it's just a little bit, then don't worry because um, you know it's not a very um, fitted garment that you're making. It's just a, a, a snood or an infinity scarf. So don't worry too much. If it's just a few millimetres out, that won't notice at all. If it's, it gets to be anything more than a, if it starts to walk really loads away and the raw edges really aren't matching anymore then my advice don't just keep sewing stop the machine you know take your work out unpick a few stitches re sort of position it make it so that it does match up again and then carry on what you don't want is to end up with something where it's kind of like that and you're sewing along um, because then you're when you turn your infinity scarf back through you'll have one of the panels bigger than the other and it won't look quite so nice. Now, when you come to this part here, just make sure that your seams for your gauze and your printed fabric are nice and flat. I'm 
And um, I'm just going to keep keep going now, right until I get back to my position where I put those two cups. So I'm now approaching the two clips there, which tells me that's the end of the seam and the beginning of the gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to that point and then do a few back stitches to make sure that nothing comes undone. <laughs> 